SAT questions that involve percentages are among the trickiest on the entire test. We're just not very good at thinking about percentages logically, so we should use the open formulas to stay organized. In another lesson, I introduced the open formulas for ordinary percentage questions, specifically when a story involves a percentage of a number or percent change. In this lesson, we'll learn about the third version of the open formula, which is used for exponential equations. I highly recommend that you watch the original lesson on percentages first so that you understand how the open formula works before we adapt it to exponential equations. We're still going to use the same constants, namely that O is the original value, P is the percent as a decimal, and on the other side of the equal sign, N is the new value. But we're also going to add in a variable. We'll add the exponent T to the outside of the parentheses. The T allows us to calculate a percentage multiple times. And in most stories, the exponent will represent the passage of time, in years, months, days, whatever the story wants. Let's look at one of the exponential stories that you're likely to see on an SAT. The population of a town each year is predicted to be 8% greater than the previous year's population. In 2002, the city had a population of 5,400 people. Which of the following functions best models the population, f of t, of the town t years after 2002? Let's start at the beginning with the original value. Since the story starts in 2002, the original population is 5,400. That number should appear outside of the parentheses, where it is unaffected by the exponent t. That's true in choices C and D, but not A and B. Next, focus on the percent change. Since the story tells us that the population is increasing, we'll add 8%, which is 0.08 as a decimal, to the number 1 as instructed by the formula. That means we need 1.08 in the parentheses. Choice D is the answer. Notice that these equations move the new value n to the front of the equation, which makes sense since functions should always start with the f of x term. You shouldn't let superficial changes like that bother you. Let's look at a question where we need to build our equation from scratch. A population of squirrels decreases by 4% each year. If there were 176 squirrels in the population in 2017, approximately how many squirrels were in the population in 2012? The first thing I notice is the percentage, which is now described as a decrease. That means we'll need to subtract 4% as a decimal from 1 in the parentheses. If we start looking for the original value, we have a problem. We're told that the population is 176 in 2017, but that can't be the original value because we're not allowed to build equations that travel backward in time. This must be the new value, and we should see this as an opportunity to use the most important math strategy, plug points into equations. But wait, why is the x value 5? It's because the open formula requires us to count time from 0. So even though our starting point takes place in 2012, we can't use 2012 as our x value. The open formula works because of the properties of 0. When we plug in 0 for our exponent, the percentage gets wiped out because anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. This would leave us with just the original value when t equals 0. So in a way, we're actually plugging two points into our open formula. We're looking for the original value, which is essentially the y-intercept, which we'll call 0a for now. We can also plug in 5, 176 for the t and n. Now we have an equation with just one variable, which we can solve. First, simplify the parentheses, then raise it to the fifth power, then divide both sides by 0.815 to get that a, our original value for 2012, is 215.9. But remember that this is a story about squirrels, and you can't have 9 tenths of a squirrel, so we should round up to 216. Before we move on, notice that a 4% decrease looks like 96% in the formula. Percent decreases will always look different in the equation than how they're described in the story. This is a common trap that the SAT hopes you fall for, but if we stick to the open formula and use 1 plus or minus p, we won't have to worry about making that mistake. But let's look at some twists that the SAT might use to confuse you. Sometimes the story won't talk about exponential growth in percentage terms. For example, a $9 stock that doubles in value every year should be represented like this, with a 2 in the parentheses. We could think of this as a percentage if we really wanted to, because doubling in value is the same as increasing the value by 100% each year. 100% is 1 as a decimal for our value of p, and 1 plus 1 is 2. But most people will intuitively understand that doubling means that our growth rate should be 2. A more unintuitive situation might be this one. If the stock is increasing by a large percentage, we really need to stick to the open formula. 
an increase of 325% will actually look like this in the formula. The parentheses show 4.25 because the open formula requires that we add 1 to 3.25, which is 325% as a decimal. Without a doubt, the SAT would give you another answer choice with 3.25 in the parentheses, hoping that you think about the situation logically instead of mathematically. As I said at the beginning of this lesson, and in my lessons on the basic open formulas, percentages are notoriously tricky on the SAT. Always use the open formulas so you don't fall for traps. Here's another situation where our intuition shouldn't be trusted. Here we have an exponential equation that looks a lot like the open formula. We're told that this equation gives the value of a stock t years after it was purchased. Which equation gives the value of the same stock m months after it was purchased? For simplicity, I only gave you the two choices that matter. Which one feels more right? No matter which one you think, you cannot just pick that answer without proving it. And proving it is very easy if we use our main math strategy. Once again, plug points into equations. Let's get some numbers to understand better how these equations relate to each other. In the original equation, I would set t equal to one year so that I can get an easy sense of how this equation operates. After one year, the value would increase by 13%. Or I can just see that 1 as an exponent leaves me multiplying 9 and 1.13, which is easy to do. Since we want an equivalent equation in terms of months, we should set m equal to 12, because 12 months is the same as 1 year. We need the m equation to produce the same 13% increase we saw in the original t equation. But if we substitute 12 into the first option, we see that we're not simply multiplying 9 and 1.13 we would be raising 1.13 to the 144th power, which is crazy. That's gonna give a vastly different value for the stock after one year. The other equation works out nicely. The exponent would be 12 over 12, which is one. So we can see that the math on the right is the same as the math on the left when we plug in the same amount of time, one year and 12 months. Now we have proof that the second equation is correct. If we had just followed our instincts, it might make more sense to multiply 12 and m in the exponent because that's how we find the number of months in a year. One year is 12 months, two years is two times 12 months, so 24, three years is 36, and so on. So if you get an exponential equation that doesn't quite follow the open formula exactly, just default to our main math strategy, plug points into equations, and arithmetize those points if needed. As always, zeros and ones are your saviors. They are quick and effective and show us how an equation will work. Now you have a complete picture of how the open formulas work together to help us on a wide variety of SAT questions. For pretty much any question that involves percentages, you should be using one or more of the open formulas. In fact, the open formulas rank very highly in importance on the SAT. Along with y equals mx plus b and the three types of quadratic equations, the open formulas will be used on multiple questions on every SAT. Lines, quadratics, and exponentials are the three most common equation types that you will work with. Make sure the open formulas are part of your plan so that you don't lose some very predictable points. Thanks for watching, and please visit the Satel Tutoring Channel homepage for more lessons and resources.